Praise the Lord, saints. Uh, this is Pastor Bobby Ladd, <clears throat> and with my lovely wife of uh, 35 years, Grace Annette Ladd. Praise the Lord. And today we're looking at the uh, book of Esther. We've been going through the Old Testament, uh, finding spots in the Bible that uh, testify of Jesus. And so today we come to the book of Esther, and it's a great book, a beautiful love story, and many movies have been made about this. It, it would be for example, one of the first places in scripture that a beauty contest was recorded. So I asked my wife to pray this morning's discourse and we'll look at the uh, book of Esther. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for this day and your blessings are in and all that you've done, all that you're doing, God, and all that you're going to do in our lives. God, have your way in our lives. Help us to walk pleasing in your sight, God. Bless us to speak always with grace, seasoned with salt, God. Let it be pleasing to you, God. Bless the um, words that goes forth on today, God. Touch hearts and minds and deliver, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Bless the vessel in which you use, God. Fill with your spirit and let your holy word go forth, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as we look at the uh, book of Esther today, the, uh, uh, one of the things to consider here is that it was during the time of Israel's captivity. As we recall, Israel had gotten divided into two countries, Judah in the south and Israel in the north. And so as a result of uh, Solomon's sin, this country was divided. And today we're looking at what happened to Judah. And through uh, idolatry and immorality, um, they had gotten themselves into captivity. The Babylonians came and overtook uh, uh, Judah and took them into captivity, and then later on, God used the Persians, the Medes and Persians, to overtake Babylon. Uh, as a result of this, uh, the Jews lived in constant servitude. And today's story, um, we find that King uh, Ahasuerus, Xerxes in history, um, he had promoted a guy by the name of Haman. And Haman was, a, was an enemy of the Jews. Now, the Bible says he was an enemy of the Jews. And so he got to where he was second in command of the kingdom. And he loved kind of parading through the streets and having people bow and kowtow to him. Some of y'all know the type. <laughs> and uh, there was one Jew in particular, Mordecai, who just didn't buy into that. Um, Haman was an, an Agagite, uh, really an Amal Amal Amalekite. Uh, so he was one of the enemies of Israel uh, by descendants. And um, Mordecai just didn't bow to him. And as a result of his not kowtowing, uh, Haman decided that he would not only destroy Mordecai, he would destroy all of the Jews. He found out he was Jew and said, I'll just destroy everyone in the nation. And used his position as second in command, he persuaded the king, who rather unwittingly agreed, uh, to allow uh, an army to destroy all Jews. Uh, but he was kind of a superstitious man, Haman was, and so he cast a lot to determine what was the best time to do it based on his gods and his, his fate and destiny and stuff. And as God would have it, that time came out to be 11 months later. So he picked a month, 11 months later, got the king to sign it, and then set a decree out saying we'll destroy all Jews, children, everybody on this particular date. And when the word got out to Mordecai, Mordecai knew who to turn to. He fasted and prayed and talked to the Lord about it. Interestingly enough, Mordecai um, was a cousin to Esther, who was the star of the story. And she ended up being an orphan. And Mordecai, being an older cousin, took her in and raised her as, as, as kind of like a father-daughter relationship. What had happened in the meantime, uh, prior to all of this going on, this decree going out, was that Ahasuerus had uh, cut loose his wife and on the basis of uh, some counsel he received. And then once he cut her loose, Vashti, uh, this counsel, these counselors talked him into having a beauty contest. Esther won it, as God would have it. And Esther was a Jew living in the king's palace and having a pretty good life, all things considered. When Mr. Cree went out, Esther didn't even know it. She was kind of shielded and sheltered being in the king's palace. And Mordecai, after he fasted and prayed, sent word to Esther, I need to talk to you. And he told Esther um, some, about the decree because she didn't even realize it and then made a request of her to go in and talk to the king. Now, the problem was in that day, if you talk to the Persian king without him, him requesting you to be there, the sentence was death. And Esther didn't want to take that chance. So we pick up the story here 
uh, in, a converse, in a conversation between Esther and Mordecai in Esther, the fourth chapter, and uh, my wife will read uh, some select verses, we'll give you, which will give you a feel for this moment. If you will go ahead, honey. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter. And so this is Esther explaining to Mordecai why she cannot go talk to the king. Mordecai tells the king, hey, go in, go, tells Esther, go in and talk to the king on our behalf, and not only on, on, on your behalf and my behalf, but for all the Jews. And Esther explains, I can't go in there because if he doesn't extend a scepter out to me, I'll automatically be killed. Okay, go ahead, sweetheart. That he may live, but I have not been called to come in unto the king these 30 days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. And so we see here that some concern on Esther's part. She says, I might get killed doing this thing. And there's a lot of messages as a preacher you can see uh, how easy it would be to, 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 to preach on some of these points that Mordecai made. You're in position for such a time as this. This is why God has you in the position. And so I'll just throw that nugget out to somebody who's listening. Maybe you're in a position for such a time as this. You don't know why you're there, but God has you in position for such a time as this to fill a unique need. Um, and, um, and then, uh, Mordecai says, uh, and by the way, God's plan just doesn't depend on you. If you don't do the will of God, he'll deliver us by another way. So, uh, understand that if you don't fulfill your purpose, God will fulfill his, but you won't get the blessing and benefit of being used. So a lot, lots in that. But I wanted to focus on today though, in trying to see Jesus is Esther was asked to be an intercessor and she finally made her mind to do it. And she says, fast and pray for me. But if I, I'm going to go. But if I perish, I perish. She just wasn't sure God was going to deliver her. But some things that are in comparison and contrast and how I see Jesus in this is that Esther went kind of uh, involuntarily. Mordecai, being a father figure, persuaded her to go. And if you look at Jesus, he had to be an intercessor for his people, not only for his people, but for the whole world. But he went voluntarily. Lo, in the Bible, the book is written, I'm coming to do thy will, O God. Jesus did not want to suffer and die. We see that in his agony at the garden. As a man, that kind of death, you know, would disturb anybody. And he said, Father, if it's any way possible in your will, let, let, don't, don't let this be this way. Nevertheless, thy will be done. Jesus went voluntarily. And Esther ended up going uh, under duress, under, under Mordecai's persuasion. And yet, uh, both had the, some, some results. In Esther's case, she went in, and some of you who know the story uh, well know that when she went in, the king actually extended the scepter to her, and she lived. Uh, Jesus went in, and he died. Um, he shed his blood. He lost his life interceding for you and me. In Esther's case, she lived. In Jesus' case, he died. In Esther's case, she didn't deliver everybody. The laws of the land was such that once the king had spoken, you couldn't reverse it. So what the king allowed the Jews to do was fight back. But many of them lost their lives. The ones who Esther interceded for and accepted that intercession lost their lives. But in Christ, everyone who accepts his intercession, all of them, <laughs> not one of them is lost. 
everybody who comes to God. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. And so we see a difference there. And not only that, the ones who uh, trusted in and accepted Esther's intercession, some of them, as I said, died. But the Bible says in 2 Timothy that Jesus Christ abolished death and brought life and immortality to life. And so I see in Esther um, intercession, saving people, doing God's will, and it reminds me uh, of another, Jesus, who did so much more and did it on such a high level that whosoever believeth in God should not perish but have everlasting life. So today, as we close, I want you to consider that you still have an intercessor. The Bible says that Jesus ever liveth to make intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And so let me leave you with these parting thoughts. As you consider what it took to save you, understand that the Bible says not by the blood of bulls and goats, but by his own blood. God has had a sacrifice so great for your sins that it would cover the whole world for all of time. And there's no goat, no bull, no sheep that is that good. Only with the precious blood of Jesus Christ can such a great price be, play, be paid? And so those of you today who come to God by faith in Christ Jesus, I encourage you to honor God, honor your faith, keep the commitment you made to the Lord, and never forget your intercessor, who unlike Esther, delivered us all. God bless you and keep you.